Hello, happy Wednesday afternoon. Thank you for joining us on our ABC 10 Facebook and YouTube channels. ABC 10 sports reporter Lena Washington, sports producer Sean Cunningham here with you to talk Sacramento Kings. We are four games out from the season, coming to an end. No postseason for Sacramento for the 13th straight year. That's the <laughs> longest playoff drought in the NBA, it's one of the while. longest droughts in all of professional sports. It's been a while, uh, but we have a lot to talk about, especially after a brutal game. Tough loss last night at home against the Rockets. 130-105 certainly felt like a bigger deficit than that. Yeah, I mean, it sure did. And, and, and you know, it's funny because we're talking about being a relevant team down the playoff stretch uh, and being a relevant team, you know, competing for a playoff spot. And the Kings did that. Uh, groovy music. Yeah, I like that's, that music. Uh, yeah, that's um, our countdown. No, they, they did that. And, and to be this relevant, I mean, we're, we were both of you, we were talking to, uh, bogey last night, Bogdan Bogdanovich, and he says, look, last year there was no pressure. Right. Um, we got to a point where by really December, January, you're already kind of out of it. Like, we knew we were there. Yeah. yeah. So coming into here where you have five games remaining, maybe you could go farther back and say realistically, more like two weeks ago, they were mathematically or realistically, as I like to say, right. uh, eliminated. But certainly this has been a, a, a learning experience. They've had to go through the gauntlet right after the All-Star, All-Star yep. break. And uh, yeah, what a difference a week or two can make. Definitely. Uh, we want to give a shout out to all of our viewers tuning in. Please give us your questions, your comments. We already got a couple people weighing in. Hello, Rick from Groveland. Hello. Thanks for watching. Uh, Thamar, hi. Have a good day to you. Uh, Matt Camarea. Camarilla. Ooh, I like that. He's got some words. He says, how about F those perennial losers? Who's he talking about? I, th- I think he's talking about the Kings. The Unless Kings? he's talking about us. I don't know I mean, if he's talking could about, be talking you, about and, me. you and no. I. Um, <laughs> but he could be talking about the Kings who are... Yeah. 30 and 48 so far. Four games remaining. Uh, they Who's can Matt seems? finish. I wonder who Matt's teams are. Ma- I'm sorry? His name was Matt? Matt Camp Caramella. 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 I wonder who Matt's teams were. Uh, we'll see. And Marion from Central Valley, hello. Thanks hello. for watching. Uh, we Please give us your questions, your comments. Weigh in. Tell us how you are really feeling about the Kings season. We're going to toss to some sound so you can hear how everyone felt after that loss to the Rockets who swept the Kings in the regular season, and did it in record fashion. Take a listen. Uh, we did not come with the mental or physical uh, attitude of playing with some force and uh, mentally locked in enough. Um, you know, we can't play that way. We're, we're better than that. That's disappointing if we had a hangover from a long trip. A uh, bunch of games, young guys, but we cannot let go of the rope, and uh, and we're not going to. So uh, we didn't close out. Obviously, you know, they set an NBA record in threes. Um, you know, we're... We almost like dared them to shoot them, and, and we didn't close out all the way. Um, didn't contest enough, and didn't play with enough effort to, to scramble around and make up for those things. And you got to give Houston a lot of credit. You know, this is a game they could have, you know, slept walk through maybe, and, and mentally approached it that way. Uh, they took an approach that, you know, hey, we played a team one day, uh, four days later, three days later, we're going to play them again, and um, let's treat it like a playoff mindset. Where we're going to make adjustments, and, and we're going to polish up our stuff. Do you want that bo- to bother them, them going after that record like that in the closing seconds and kind of trying to make it? I don't, I don't know if our guys realized it. I mean, to be honest with you, I didn't. I mean, you know, I could see what was going on and then I realized it, but uh, right right away, I don't think so. Uh, well, you watched the game, sir. Did it look tough? Kind of, kind of but did that mean did it feel tough? No, I think we went out there, just didn't make shots, and they made a lot of threes. Yeah, they were obviously going for a record late. I mean, is that, do you want something like that to kind of bother this group when, when a team does something like that? Uh, I guess. Um, I don't really, I ain't know. I ain't really look. Um, but I guess, yeah, it's probably pretty bad. Uh, I, don't, I can't speak for everybody else. Um, I know for me, I... I ain't having you no know, records broken on, 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 you know, against us or me personally. Uh, I don't really like it. Um, the competitive uh, person that I am, player I am, I don't like that. But uh, I can't speak for everybody else. All right, Marvin Bagley can't speak for everybody else, but it certainly seemed like everybody felt the same. It was pretty quiet in the locker room. I yes. actually joked with Sean. I could have dropped a pin in there and seen how loud it was. The record we're talking about, though, is the Houston Rockets tied the NBA record for most made threes in a game. Which, by the way, they set earlier this year. Yeah. Their own record. It was an NBA record. They did it earlier this year. And look, yeah, you mentioned they swept the Kings in the regular se- in the season series. Um, if I'm in that locker room after the game, I'm feeling like Marvin Bagley. Yeah. I, they're jacking up threes 
in the closing seconds going for something. They're either in one. There's two ways to look at it. They're either running up the score, which mm-hmm. you should have a problem with. Yeah. Get some pride, defend, lay a hard foul, do whatever it is you need to do. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, they're going for an NBA record. And Dave Yeager, I thought, was brilliant when he pointed out right there. He's like, I don't even think my guys realized it. That should say something, meaning that, guys, these, this team shoots a lot of threes. Yeah. And whether or not you like it, I mean, they're t- talk about whether it's a bad matchup, and Willie sure. goes, yeah, they shoot a lot of threes. That's all you had yeah. to say. Um, I mean, that's been the Achilles heel for the Kings is perimeter defense, not right. being able to stop them. And I think there's really three teams that stand out to me that just have absolute ownage over the Kings this year. And that was obviously Houston, Houston um, Clippers, the Clippers, and Milwaukee. Yeah. And, and what do they all have in common? They, and the Clippers are one of the teams that defend the three the most. And I was talking to their beat writer Jonathan Fagan after mm-hmm. the game, and he says the Clippers are actually the team that worries the Clippers. The, excuse me, the, the Rockets the most because of the way they defend the perimeter. Right. Well, yeah. because they know they, right. they play <laughs> similarly, and they know that you can't let James Harden just have no, an island over there. No. He's gonna, you know. And I will retract my statement of Paul George being the MVP and me being over James Harden's performance, uh, getting to watch him do his thing uh, in person last night. That's he's, the MVP. He's the MVP. No, he's, he's the, the MVP. MVP. Giannis, you had a great season, but this guy, I mean, he's Harden, it's unreal. Harden is doing things that, that hasn't been done since Will Chamberlain. Right. I mean, that is, that's just the and, – and as somebody put it the other day, we're having this discussion about whether or not you think Giannis or Harden would be the MVP. Look, Giannis has been fine, but – he can go 25 minutes and the Bucks without doing a, a damn thing on that team, yeah. and the Bucks will be just fine. <clears throat> James Harden, on the other hand, his usage is so high with yeah. that team. He's involved in everything, and he's no slouch defensively. No, um, Giannis Which, uh, actually Giannis, he's changed that reputation for right. himself. A yeah, because he used to be just see ya, yeah. tour, you know, Ole, yeah. <laughs> let the guy go right by you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, look, Giannis has him in that category. Yeah. Okay, but when you factor in everything else, I think James Harden is bar by far the MVP of this league. Well. Kings fans, let us know if you think James Harden <laughs> yeah. is the MVP of the league or who you think your MVP uh, is. We're going to continue this conversation weekly pretty much into the playoffs, even though the Kings won't be there. we got a lot of NBA teams to cover, of course, with the Warriors uh, going into the playoffs, going for their fourth championship in five years. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty big. Uh, but we want to get to some of your comments. Amy from Rancho Cordova says, Go Kings. They can do this. So, Amy... McGarvey, she's a she's a lifelong fan. Yeah, she's, she should. Yeah, she's she knows what, strong. She know what? It's funny too because we were talking about this. Like you hear the Kings, buddy healed last night. He's like, our goal is to get to be five hundred. Like mm-hmm. this is what they want their goal to be. Right. Uh, which is I say, Which is fine. I mean, again, we had twenty four wins, twenty five wins, and that mm-hmm. that was kind of the expectation. Forty wins to me is kind of the benchmark. Mm-hmm. Whether it's five hundred, however that plays out, um, I think no matter where you have it, if the season were to end today, think of however long thirty years or so of Kings basketball in Sacramento. This would be the ninth best record. That's pretty remarkable. In, yeah, in Sacramento history. So that just shows you there's been a ton of lean years mm-hmm. in, in the NBA in the round Sacramento Kings. Um, but it's certainly on the upswing, and that's something to be proud of. Definitely. Uh, but we want to ask you, with that said, do you think the Kings will finish at 500 this season? They've got Cleveland here tomorrow. They they go to Utah the mm-hmm. next day on Friday. Then they host the New Orleans Pelicans for Sunday's final home game of the season. And then they head to Portland to close out the season uh, on Wednesday. So four games left, two really tough playoff contenders, and then you have New Orleans who got them on the road uh, about two weeks ago. So uh, it's not going to be a, an easy schedule. But you got to steal one. You got to steal, steal one. one. I have them winning two of four. <clears throat> that was way before the All Star break and all these things yeah. transpired. So yeah, I mean you got to steal one. And, and last night. Realistically, you weren't going to steal. You were just hoping for a competitive game, right. and that was done by the first quarter. Right. Yeah. Uh, Kelly did Dinitz. Kelly Kinsley says, Kings fan through thick and thin, feeling optimistic for next year. That, that's a silver lining. I'd, I'd want to know what Kelly wants to think. What, what do they need to do in the offseason? You know what she says? Great, great follow-up. Great. Yes. Kelly says, I think they need a stronger big man. So, I would agree. Good good intel, Kelly. Uh, Mark Maris wants to know, what position do you think is their biggest need in the draft or free agency? <laughs> Again, Willie Cauley-Stein being brought up. He says that they should drop them, start Giles, then find a re-back, rebounding backup center that can defend on the ball. Uh, Willie Cauley-Stein is a free agent. It seems like every week we are talking about him. We Somebody are. else. It's not us. No. We just want to make that clear. It's the <clears> fans, <throat> the people who are weighing in and watching. Uh, that want to know, is Willie going to be a king next year or not? Uh, we will see. The offseason is going to be very interesting for this team. And he's polarizing. I mean, look, the Kings always, Kings fans always have that one 
player that ends up being the target of their ire. Sure. And Willie has certainly been that guy for a few years, I would say, um, especially after the DeMarcus Cousins trade, because I think they expected, okay, you're losing a guy like DeMarcus Cousins. Willie now is your chance to be that double-double guy, mm -hmm. uh, that perennial all-star. And, and Willie's just Willie, and he's, <clears throat> excuse me, he's having a season where it's his, be it's his best since he's been with the Kings. Yeah. Um, but still, he just be is that still that same guy. And I think in comparison to someone like Marvin Bagley, sometimes you can look at a guy like Willie Cauley-Stein, and it just looks different. Sure. You know, when he goes out there and makes a mistake, it's different than when someone like Marvin Bagley makes a mistake because Marvin looks like he's so involved and so energetic. Mm -hmm. um, Willie's Willie. You know, it's a different approach. It's a different mindset. Um, but at the same time, I, I get it. I get the frustration. Yeah. I can, I can, when someone says that they don't want Willie Cauley-Stein a part of this future going forward, I get it. I get it. But at the same time, what's that look like? What's next? Sure. So do you want to, if you do that, you can identify other bigs in the league. DeAndre Jordan, Nikola mm -hmm. Vucevic, so DeMarcus Cousins again, guys that are going to be available yeah. in free agency. Who do you throw the money at? And I would tell Kings fans right away, the Kings will and should extend the qualifying offer to, to, to Willie so that, mm -hmm. that way that they can match anything he gets. If, have, at least have that option to, or right. then therefore work out a sign and trade if they don't want to keep him. But if the team dictates that his value is $8 million a year, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's not bad. Um, so is it at a point where, okay, if it's at $8 million a year, is he still worth having? Or is if he's going 15, 18, 19, 20, is it a com you have to kind of see where his value sure. Some fans are like, I don't care. I don't care. Well, right. They can pay him a million dollars a year. Get him out of here. Yeah. So. Well, <laughs> that's, that's one take that's been consistent, I, yeah. it seems like, throughout every week that I we've would, done this. I would say, too, to that question, I think it was Kelly a minute ago who said, um, what's their biggest position of need? That was Mark who asked the Mark. position of need. But Kelly Mark. says they need a stronger big man. Well, and I think, yeah, and I would agree with Kelly. Mark, I would say, actually, uh, to answer that question, I think a backup point guard, uh, a solidified backup point guard that is, is th I guess that depends on what you do with Harrison Barnes. Mm -hmm. If Harrison Barnes opts in and he's your, quote-unquote, Small forward. You're sure. starting small forward, then you're fine. If you decide that you're not, you know, that whether Harrison opts in or not, if you think that that's the small forward of the future, who knows? But maybe you go out and try and, you know, go after a guy like Tobias Harris. Sure. Would be my number one priority of the yeah. offseason. Um, and even if, even if Harrison Barnes opts in, that would be a nice situation to have. But mm -hmm. I think really the thing I've noticed year in and year out is looking at, uh, or at least for these past two years, is a backup point guard. You know, is, mm -hmm. you have De'Aaron Fox, that's fantastic. Bogdan Bogdanovich has shown the ability to push the floor. Right. But guys like Yogi Ferrell have come in and, and, and had successful seasons this, yes. this year because Bogey doesn't push with the intensity that Yogi does. Sure. It's fun okay. to say Bogey and Yogi, by the way. Yeah, Bogey, Yogi. <laughs> Yogi, Bogey. Uh, Anthony J. Carmichael says Giannis is his MVP. Fair okay. enough. Yeah. He's a team player, makes his teammates better. Also, the Bucks are nowhere near good, near as good without Giannis. So I'd say the same thing about I'd say the, the same Houston. thing about James Harden. Yeah. You know? I mean, right look, at, <clears throat> look at the when Clint Capella goes down, Chris Paul goes down. Right. James Harden still makes. In He's fact, still dropping fifty to sixty. Clint Capella <laughs> goes down, and James Harden started his streak of thirty in that stretch. Yeah, that's so true. That's even more impressive. Right. So, I'm, I, I get look. I get the honest. Nothing. No slight against the honest. I just disagree. I think it's James Harden. Well, agree to disagree, but uh, <laughs> a lot of talent, obviously. In the NBA, we've seen the development of a lot of talent here in Sacramento. As we mentioned, this season has been one of the most successful in all of Sacramento franchise history. Yeah. Um, but we want to know, fans, we know you're critical. We know you kind of came in with low expectations. Then we reached that high before the new year, and then we kind of trickled down as the All-Star break came. So do you consider this season a success or a failure? Certainly a surprise, uh, I would say, is, is the hot-button word for this team, is a surprise of the NBA season. But... With the intention, with Buddy Heald betting his, betting his house on making the playoffs and that confidence, and now, you know, you hung out strong until the final week of the season, but you're not playing in June. Right. You're, not pay you're not playing in April. So is that a failure, considering where this team was last year with 27 wins? Or do you see this? I see the success. I, I don't yeah. think this season is a failure. Obviously, in the grand scheme, every player, every team goes out to win a championship. Right. If you ask them what their goal is for the season at Media Day, they're going to say win a championship, make the playoffs, contest, um, contend, I should say. Uh, but that's not something that Sacramento has been able to. What be did a you part say of. that the uh, the streak was now? The, the the streak of losing seasons for for not making the playoffs. Thirteen. Thirteen. Now. So thirteen. So there's two ways to look at it. Yes, given what you said, and I agree, this is a uh, this is a successful season based off of what you're building to. Mm -hmm. So there is that. 
but there's the cynical side, which is like, you haven't made the playoffs in 13 seasons, which means you're the lower half of NBA teams. Half the teams in the NBA make the playoffs. and mm-hmm. you haven't done it in 13 years, that's a failure. So I get it. But if you take a smaller sample size and look at what they're building towards, mm-hmm. this, of course, is definitely, it's, it's impossible to call this a, a failure, in my opinion, because of the fact of what they're building toward. Now, sure. you get to the offseason and you make some, you make some tough decisions. What do you do with the, head, with the coaching staff? What do you do with um, Lee Colley Stein? What do mm-hmm. you do in the offseason? That's definitely things that have to be addressed. But because of what the season they had, look, you're a relevant team up until two weeks ago. Right, which <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you what, that nobody predicted in, yeah. that. You can, you can be the lifelong fan through thick and thin, and you know, but people would have called you delusional right. in September if you said, oh, yeah, we're making the playoffs. We're going for 40. We're, you know, n- after seeing the California Classic and Summer League play, it was not that impressive. No. So you would not be able to pin this team to come up with at least t- 10 more wins than they had last season, um, let alone have a chance to finish at 500 for the first time since they last made the playoffs, I believe, yeah. was their last uh, 500 season. So Well, it's, and it's, it's amazing that they're able to do it and still be a part of this rebuild, or the rebuild and the development of players. There's no better development of players than being a part of a playoff push. Mm-hmm. So playing meaningful games is great. Throwing guys out there, you know, what we'd always say in the last 25 games of an NBA of a losing NBA season, and guys shine, that doesn't mean sure. anything. That, that, that's usually fool's gold. That's yeah. what I like to call fool's gold. Hmm. So what you go out and you have these moments where teams can compete, that helps your development entirely. And sure. that's when you're playing meaningful basketball games. And to be able to do both in a season where you're dedicated to growth and development, mm-hmm. Oh, the expectations will be different next year. No matter what they do this off season, Absolutely. because of the they season, be. yeah, because of the season that they've had. Even if they have a new coach, even if they rehaul the roster, I don't know how that would happen. But even if even if they blow up this core, which again they're not going to do that. But even if they do mm-hmm. that, the expectations are that this team is a playoff team next year, right. and it should be. Right. Let us know if you guys agree. Are, are the teams going to make? Are the Kings going to make the playoffs next season? Given the growth that we saw this year, the young core, one of whom is, of course. Harry Giles playing in mm-hmm. his first NBA season, even though he was drafted two years ago out of Duke. Uh, he uh, overcame multiple injuries, knee injuries. Um, they held him off to kind of get back, but now he is suffering from a thigh contusion that's kept him out for the last five games, I believe. Seven, yeah. Seven, and now he's going to be shut down for the rest of the season. So four games remaining, um, but we had a chance to, excuse me, talk to him about just to assess his season, see where, how his body's feeling, and just hear his reaction to being on the bench for the last five games of the season. Take a listen. It's disappointing. Uh, just because I just wanted to finish the season out uh, strong and just, you know, with a good feeling of, you know, doing good uh, going into the summer. But uh, I felt like I left off on a good note. Uh, happy with myself for the season. You know, I'm, I'm never all the way, I'm never going to be content ever. You know, I'm always going to be on myself. Like, I, just, I can always do better, I can do more. But, uh, you know, from where I came from. And, uh, this is the journey and the long path. Uh, even taking it back to Duke, you know, I was, you know, just went through some struggles and uh, not playing last year. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm blessed to be in the position I'm in. So I just got to look at it for all the positives that I got out of it. Uh, what I got going on now is, is something that's so minor. It's not even anything. So it's, I'll be back pretty soon. It's just the extent of the season is left. It's, it's not enough timing for the way I feel. You know. Uh, it was 10, 15 games, you know, it may be different, you know what I'm saying? But uh, just five, I think by the time I hit, I just think it would be too late anyway, you know, so. And you had 58 games on your boat in that first year. That's major for me, uh, especially at this level, high level. Um, I don't care what anybody says, uh, it's, it's big. Uh, especially all, you know, it's not like it's a break or a gap. Like an AAU tournament, it's every other weekend, it's, it's every day. So, including practices and workouts. So, uh, I, I think. Pat myself on the shoulder a little bit. Uh, think my body held up and just going to get it stronger this summer. And that way I'm not in this position next year, uh, having little contusions, anything like that. You know, something you can't help. The play I had was, you know, it wasn't like I did anything wrong. I got hit. So, uh, you know, fortunately it wasn't as bad as it, you know, could have been by the look. So I'm just, I'm just excited. I'm excited for the future. I'm certainly excited for Harry Giles' future. I said he was the most impressive player of this whole season to me so far. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you got to root for this kid and everything he's overcome. And How can just you his, not? Just his attitude. I mean, we, he let us follow him in the nail salon and bowling and all that stuff. And he's, he let us talk to him after, obviously, a disappointing loss and knowing that he's not going to be playing. You don't want to ask, ask, answer questions about no. that. But he did. So thank you, Harry. For no, that. He's, he's someone it's hard not to root for. Yeah. I mean, three knee, three knee surgeries, two ACLs in both knees. Coming back from that... 
a guy who was considered to be in high school, high school player of the year. Yeah. Um, and he goes from only really having that to just a few games at Duke where he's playing maybe 10, 12 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then coming into this season, or into his rookie season, which was last year, and not playing at all, and only right. having, you know, only having the, the, the practices to show mm-hmm. off. And as he said, to go through where you're playing one day, you're maybe practicing another, and then you have days where Every you're not day. playing again. Yeah. The NBA is not like that. It's a grueling grind. You've yeah. got practices, days off, mm-hmm. you, it, hardly any days off, and then you go scrimmages, practices, treatment days, stuff where you're working on. Then you have game days, and he played in 58 games. Yeah. That's an incredible accomplishment for the guy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they. you can easily see here, I mean, you're seeing highlights right now of Harry. His skill set is so unique for a guy who's 6'11". Yeah. And to, be, to go into this offseason where I think, you know, hopefully he'll play a game or two in summer league. I'm not sure if he'll play the entire thing or if sure. at all. Um, but the thigh contusion is nothing to be a, nothing to be <laughs> no, concerned no about. No point of concern. No, I mean, it, for people who don't know, if Luka Doncic is going through the same thing. You get stiffness in the thigh. You only have five. Last night you had five games remaining. You right, only have four, four left now. Yeah, as he said, if we had 10, 15 games, I'd be ready to go. Mm-hmm. Why push it? Yeah. Start the, re, the offseason early. These games are meaningless now. You don't have a first-round pick. Um, so you, this is just time for him to get better. It's part of the development, and I can't wait to see him next year. Yeah, definitely. Rooting for you, Harry. And, of course, he... And Marvin Bagley, the two rookies that we're looking forward to seeing them develop as well. Um, but Harry, I mean, he's that guy that not only, as you mentioned, his skill set, multiple people in the locker room say he's the best passer on the best team. Best passer. But, by great far. hands. Yep. Um, Dave Yeager has said on multiple occasions after the game, I mean, even if he gets, you know, a limited amount of playing time, you notice he's on the floor. And you want a guy who you notice is on the floor whenever he is. He takes the most of his opportunity. I mean, and his energy is is noticeable, is palpable among the locker room and the and the fans. They love him. He loves Sacramento. I mean, it seems like every day he's tweeting out something about fan love. So, yeah. I mean, so, I saw somebody say he was the uh, the four loco of the team because I he, like that. <laughs> he just absolutely injects yeah. energy, even though it's an alcoholic drink. Uh, again, he injects not. energy into the team, much needed energy. You would, like you said, you notice him, and I think the way you see him being played right now on this team this season, coming into the season is different than what we're going to see next year. Absolutely. I think with the fact that you're going to have him with with uh, Bagley together, my gosh. Yeah, they're the, so fun to watch <laughs> oh, together yeah, on the floor. The energy that they bring, uh, you should never be out-rebounded. <laughs> you should never be out-hustled. Right. Um, those guys are so much fun, and, and they're they're easy. I mean, the fans gravitate towards that. Yeah. Uh, that's what They love to see that hustle. They love to see that fire, and it's easy to see why – you know, people thought Harry Giles compared to the likes of Kevin Garnett and Chris Webber. Mm-hmm. Chris Webber for the passing ability, being 6'11", having those skill, that skill set, and KG for that that crazy fire. Yeah. Which I even asked Harry, I was like, you're kind of crazy. Yeah, he, no, well, you are. Yeah. <laughs> you're crazy. <laughs> well, a lot of people compare, he compared himself to uh, KG. I mean, I talked to Paul Pierce when he was yeah. here interviewing Marvin Bagley before the season started, but he, by name, said he's excited to see Harry Giles right. and how he developed. So to have an NBA, you know, <laughs> legend like that call you out when he hasn't even seen you really play in an NBA game yeah. yet is pretty remarkable. And I would say if any fan, this is kind of weird, but any fan gets to meet Harry Giles, not that he's got the biggest hand you'll ever see, but just put your hand up just, to him. Just see. Just, just look at what it. It's incredible. Like. Yeah. Um, all right. Anthony J. Carmichael has a little bit to say. Okay. He's, he's got go, his, Anthony. I'm sh- uh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> I'm almost 25. The Kings have Happy 40 birthday. wins. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, put it into perspective, the Kings have won 40-plus games since 05-06 when I was 12. This season, the Kings took a huge leap towards the team being post a postseason team in the future. This is the most potential this team has had in over 10 years, and I would say this is the best roster I've they've had in 10 years. It is a must to solidify the center position. We need great rebounding, rim-protecting center, and we need to add depth off of the bench. Anthony J. Carmichael watches his Kings. 25 years in, and he came out watching Sacramento Kings basketball out the womb. Eddie Johnson, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. That's, that's how of, long it's been. A lot of Sacramentans have, and, and he's right on. I mean, that's that's exactly right. Um, I think, And that's that kind of illustrates the not only the, the, the tough times that have been over the past 13 years, mm-hmm. um, even though you've had glimpses of things that you can get excited over. It's nothing like this. I mean, the, you know, you have a rebuild where you can actually see it bearing fruit, and, and this is an exciting time. And you know, say what you will at the time they, they did it, but at least they did it the right way. Uh, they built through the draft, and they're following the model that was set by the Warriors, mm-hmm. Denver Nuggets, think guys that are using this homegrown talent. Uh, this is the way you do it. You build through the draft, and hopefully you come up right in the draft because there's a lot of teams that, that, that don't. You don't always do it. Look how right. long it took Philly. They trusted the process, though. <laughs> they did. They sure did. And look at them now.
Um, also, just you mentioned, uh, we mentioned Marvin Bagley. Also, want to mention uh, he was rocking a Nipsey Hustle shirt last night yeah. at the game, paying homage to the late rapper who was gunned down in front of his store in LA. Um, everybody, it seems like in the sports world, has positive things to say about him. You saw Russell Westbrook, what he did last night, dropping 20, 20, and 20, significant given Nipsey's upbringing in LA. Um, and a lot of people in NBA and sports and entertainment um, honoring Nipsey Hustle, including. Marvin back. And by the um, way, it's strange. Not, a, I mean, cool Kings connection. I mean, Nipsey would come up to games. Um, I had never heard of him right around 2011, maybe it was, mm -hmm. 2012. And uh, two Kings players, Demarcus Cousins and Isaiah Thomas, who actually is the probably the closest to Nipsey at yeah. the time. And James Harden as well. Yeah, but I mean, in terms of just Kings players, mm -hmm. like bringing him up here and, and he would be here at games, it would right. be a familiar sight at games. Um, I, they were the first people I thought about when that, when that tragedy occurred mm -hmm. because of how close they were. And especially Isaiah. Yeah. Isaiah, this this guy came into um, into Sacramento, um, putting Nipsey Hustle at, at, at an alt at, at just up on this pedestal, pedestal yeah. to say how great this guy was. And I had never heard of him at the time. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan now, yeah, and absolutely. I credit Isaiah Thomas for that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. you know, it's a it's a heartbreaking story. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, Marvin Bagley, his own music artist, budding right. music artist of his own, paying homage there. Uh, but let's take a look at the upcoming schedule. Four games left in the Kings season. You got Ooh. the Cleveland Cavaliers coming to town tomorrow for an early tip off. I have them winning that game, uh, and then they head to Utah to face the Jazz on Friday. And then on Sunday, it's the last home game of the season. Six man honoring, uh, they're going to honor the six man, which is you, the fans. Fan Everybody in the yeah. stand. Yeah, fan, fan appreciation, all 17,000 of you out there on Sunday. Those should be two wins. Those two, that Thursday and Sunday, those are, those are get be. right games. Get right games. And then if you can steal one in Portland to close out the season with a bang, you will finish at 500. Really, all you got to do is steal one of those, right? Yeah. Friday I mean, or Wednesday. Win which, your home which, games and steal. Flip a coin. Who do you think? Where, where are they going to take one? I think Utah they get it. Portland? No, I think they get it in Portland okay. uh, because I think Portland won't really have much to play for. Hopefully, sure. if, I mean, if you're a Kings fan, hopefully they don't have much to play for. So maybe, maybe they rest a guy like Dame Lillard or Stephen yeah. McCollum and and play some of the young guys. So yeah, I think that that's probably the the, the game that you can probably point to is the this could be the one that that they steal. Game eighty two coming up. Uh, given my handy dandy cheat sheet, which we don't have the handy cam here to get a close up, but. The way that this season's going, I have the Kings finishing 40 and 42, personally. But, That's fine. Um, you know, we'll see what transpires. If they get 40, if they get 40, I don't care what the record is. If they get 40... That's a that's a feather in the cap. Yeah, it sure is. 100%. Sean Cunningham on Twitter, L Washington TV on Twitter. Send us your questions, your comments, how you feel. Weigh in on the comments below. We'll be back next week where we won't have Kings basketball. No, it'll but be we'll over. we'll be talking NBA, playoffs, the Warriors, all that good stuff. So... Give us your questions or comments, and we'll see you back here next Wednesday at 3 on ABC10 TV on Facebook and YouTube. Bye. Bye.